Welcome back everyone, it's Jason, your friendly neighborhood drone scientist. You know why you're here. We're talking about data. The only reason we flew this guy right here is to get good data. It's episode three, processing of the Enterprise Drone Platform Showdown. If you missed the first two episodes, you can go ahead and catch a link to them right here. And if you're finding value in these videos, make sure that you click the subscribe button right here. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure which platform is gonna win this one. So let's get into it. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so if you're like me, this is probably gonna be one of your favorite episodes all about data. But where are we gonna start? We're gonna break this up into two parts. We're gonna have processing and analytics. So let's start with processing. We're gonna jump right into drone deploy. So the first step is we're gonna dive into this Village East Park. This was our, our initial project that, we fl that we've flown. And from here, this is obviously the fly portion. So within drone deploy, we'll have to go to upload. So for uploading, we can upload into this uh, pending mission. This is the mission that we've flown, and it's waiting for images already for us. If we already have an existing GeoTIFF from another processing engine, we can just upload it here and still have access to all the capabilities within Drone Deploy. And also, it covers slant range images and uploading multi-spectral files. So this is all good right from here. This is just an RGB mission, so we're going to go ahead and select the photos. In this case, they're going to be in this images folder. So we're just gonna grab all of the images and open them up. It's gonna check those images and, and get them ready for processing. And I like that it shows uh, all of the image captures so we can see if there's any holes, just kind of at first glance. Looks like everything's good here. It does ask for uh, a map name. We can just leave it the same name. We're gonna leave it as test map. Only in this case, I'm gonna actually add ED for drone deploy test map. And here's for buildings and construction sites. So this is definitely more of a terrain map. It's just a local park. So there's 107 images. It does give us an estimate for how long it'll take. From here, it's pretty clear we can go through a ground control point collection process. In this case, we don't have any ground control points. And there are some advanced settings. Let's take a look at those real quick. We can turbo upload. In this case, we're gonna leave everything the same in the processing options. We're gonna put it at quality over speed. But if we just want on a quicker ortho, we can definitely change some of the parameters in, in the engine that they use to make it faster. But for the sake of this comparison, we're just gonna leave everything sort of at the default. So let's go ahead and upload. All right, so this project has successfully uploaded 107 images. It says we'll receive an email when it's ready. So this is great. So the map is now processing in the drone deploy engine and we can go back to the project. You notice that it has moved to processing. If we wanted to upload more data for this particular mission. We can here as well. So if we had a couple different flights, we can also upload that data here for processing at the same time. Uh, so remember, this isn't just for nadir imagery. If we were flying a structure, we would want to have obliques at a couple different uh, elevations or altitudes so that we can get that sort of facade for all of the buildings that we're trying to get to sort of complete the model and make it more robust. So all of that is, is able to be handled within the drone deploy engine. So now we wait. And while we're waiting, let's go ahead and switch over to measure ground control. All right, so now let's run through that process again one more time with measure ground control, just the upload and processing portion of the data processing chain. So here we are in measure ground control and they have a very clear process data action. I believe we can also do it within the mission, but at this point we're gonna keep everything together. So we're gonna do this in the mission that we've flown. We're gonna upload it right here. So we process data. This is a mapping and photogrammetry mission. It does give you the option to select mapping and photogrammetry, or it's an inspection and annotation mission. This one is using Scopito. Uh, so we're gonna get started here. We're gonna give it a product name. And we're gonna select the imagery processing. Let's see, in this case, you can, you can grab a folder, you can grab individual files. That's kind of nice. 
So in this case, we're gonna upload an entire folder and upload it. Gives a little confirmation message and we hit upload. It's going to check and upload all of these images. Oh, the beauty of fast forward. All right, so now that it's done, we can just hit done. All right, so 107 total images to be processed. We hit next, and then it's gonna go ahead and ask us about what template we would like to use. Now, these are standard Pix4D templates, but to keep things apples to apples as possible, we're just gonna hit standard. Highest quality results, slow processing time, standard. Select and continue. In this case, we're doing a 3D map, so we want these products. Select and continue. It does have a very nice interface for GCPs, a sort of a next step. And I like the timeline here. This is, this is really nice in the seven step process. We have no GCPs, so we're just going to hit next. And then it's gonna ask us, do we want the best available resolution, a custom resolution, or auto buy ground sample distance? In this case, we're just gonna select best available because that was the default. No indices, no advanced settings. But if we had advanced settings, we can set them here. We can use different calibration methods. In this case, everything is going to be standard. If it was sort of a, a bare field, we, you could get much better results with this alternative processing calibration method. It is very good for, for fields that look very homogeneous. So, but in this case, uh, this is a park, so we're just gonna use standard. And next, basically give an overview. Does everything look good? Yes, it does. And we're going to submit for processing. And we're all set. So now at this point, we can go back to the dashboard or we can go back to the mission. And we go back to the dashboard, we see that this data product, they're now currently uploading. So now we wait. Now I'm expecting that we should get processing completion emails from both Measure and Drone Deploy, and we will pick up when we get those emails. All right, we just got the emails back from Drone Deploy and Measure. Let's talk about the timing. Let's take a look. So the drone deploy processing finished in 42 minutes, whereas the measure ground control processing finished in 65 minutes. Remember that was still using the same data set. Since we didn't really get a good data capture from drone deploy, we used the measure ground control twice. So it is completely apples to apples, same data set went to each one, and drone deploy finished processing about 35% faster than the measure ground control. Let's take a look at the actual data. All right, let's start with measure. Let's take a look at the data that came out of measure. So we have the data products it is now done. If we click into the data product, we get an interesting viewer that in my opinion, isn't completely streamlined. I don't think they intended it for this purpose. It does work but it does have a few issues. It doesn't load things extremely smoothly. Um, it does give you some options and you do have some menstruation tools. You can load, it looks like, see sometimes loading some of these, it looks like it's not loading them very quickly, um, but it looks like the data components are there. Um, this isn't my favorite viewing experience. It looks a little disjointed, um, but that being said, they do offer, and this is sort of what they offer. Um, so if you take a look at any of their, their demos, they actually demo the Pix4D cloud. So let's go take a look at that if we're gonna do an apples to apples comparison. All right, so let's go back. So there's actually actions here. And if you click on the actions, we can actually download products directly from here, which is very nice. But if I wanna take a look at the data first, which is definitely what you should always do, you can view in Pix4D and you can right here, copy a Pix4D share link. So that is helpful. Um, if you just wanna share it without someone that is outside a measure, you can copy the link right from here and shoot it in an email. But let's go ahead and view it in Pix4D, opens up a new window. Definitely much more responsive, loads much faster. Um, it is. It does have the entire area of interest that we're looking at. I can change the background map to throw up, uh, you know, either a street view, uh, maybe a basic map view, or I can look up the satellite. So let's just leave the satellite view up. So let's go ahead and kind of view in and out. Just a quick little quality check. Just a couple different places. I look here. 
Looks like we have a few little weird things going on related to sort of the melty look that you sometimes get. Reminder, this is not a mapping, this is not a structure mission. We did this completely just to create an ortho mosaic. If we wanted to create a mapping mission, we probably would have added a cross hatch or a, you know, one of the other 3D mapping, um, either obliques. Uh, that would have definitely smoothed out a lot of these issues as well. But I do like to check these just to see if the quality is, is good because it is the same data set that went into both. So each engine just kind of handles them differently. And that's very much par for the course for all of the processing engines that I have ever experienced in my time in this industry is that your mileage may vary with all of them. If you keep to some of the, the, the basics of how to do good collection, the amount of overlap, the right camera, the right altitude, the right speed, all of those things will aid in creating a good product regardless of the engine. So I'm not gonna judge this one too harshly just simply because it had a few melty points when, on some structures that, I, that I'm honestly not trying to map in this particular, I wasn't trying to model in this particular test. But just for overall quality, quality looks quality looks pretty good. So now let's uh, switch over to drone deploy. So when I switch over to drone deploy, the same ortho, it did clip it to the boundaries of the area of interest, which is both good and bad. Sometimes you want a little bit of extra data, but clipping it to the area of interest, I actually like that because that means that the mission was defined all of the images were defined to get good data within the area of interest boundaries. What you'll notice in any of these missions is that when you start to get to the edges, accuracy falls off, quality falls off, things just fall off when you get to the edges. And that's simply because the mission wasn't designed to go outside of the area of interest that you that you designed. If you, if you wanted to go outside, make your AOI bigger. So I actually kind of like that it does this. So let's zoom into that same area. Well, let's just take a look. Similar, I would say they both have uh, similar, but interesting. Uh, this building, this structure in the drone deploy image is a little melty, whereas this structure in the measure image was a little melty. So I'm gonna give them apples to apples. They're about they're about the same as far as overall quality. Obviously the drone deploy, the drone deploy ortho mosaic was produced faster. So that is something to be said because they were both on standard processing and about 35% faster is an advantage, especially if these missions start to get any bigger. It is definitely non-linear when you start to get to those larger missions and they each process them very differently. With the quality being about the same in both engines, it's really hard to rate them differently in the upload and processing category. So in that case, I'm not. I'm gonna rate them both at four stars. So good job to drone deploy and measure. It is now almost, if you can, if you've been keeping score, it's about even. So I am actually really excited. So I had to break up processing analytics into two episodes. This was the processing episode, the upload and processing. The next one is going to be all analytics. I'm very excited that one. There's gonna be a lot of bells and whistles to play with in both pieces of software. So stick with me and make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever a new episode drops and if you haven't caught up in any of the other episodes make sure you do that before we get to analytics and you'll be able to keep score with the rest of us hope you all have a great week and we'll see you next one